I don't know about you, but I just love to check items off a checklist. My wife also loves it when I get my uh, chores done. And of course, when we do that over time, it can help us build better habits and improve performance, not just personally, but also in business. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to create this calendar progress chart in Excel. And this is actually going to be a two-part series. In this first part, I'm gonna explain when to use the calendar chart and show you how to build it. And then in the second video, I'm gonna explain how to make the chart interactive, along with some different styling options and a weekly goals feature. And this calendar chart comes from a post I did on eight different types of progress charts. I'm going to create tutorials on the other charts here. So if you're interested in those, get subscribed to our channel to get notified when new videos are published. All right, so let's jump into Excel and look at how to build out this calendar chart. Now, before I begin, I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download, and I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. So go ahead and pause the video now, download the file so you can follow along. And this video is packed with training. Here's everything you're going to learn. So what we have here is just a simple month view calendar chart. And all of the days where we've completed a task or a goal are highlighted in blue. Now, before we start using this chart, it's probably important to understand when you might want to use this chart. So these charts, of course, are very popular for any habit or fitness type uh, tracking apps. And that's great for personal use, but this can also be used for business use as well. You might want to use it to track attendance, daily outbound calls, store openings on time, sales goals. There's all kinds of uses. So I'm curious to know how you will use use this calendar chart. So leave a comment below and let us know. All right, so now we're going to build the chart. And to do that, we're going to jump over to the follow along sheet here where we don't have a chart, but I do have all of the chart data here. And I'm not gonna create all of the chart data. I don't wanna make you watch me do that, but I will explain it as we go. So we're first gonna start with the chart data here in columns I and J for the XY data. Cause essentially what we're gonna do here is insert an XY scatter chart. That's the chart type that we use to create this calendar chart. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna first select this cell right here. I'm hold control shift down arrow or hit control shift down arrow and then uh, shift right arrow to just select all of this data. You can also select it with the mouse here, but essentially you wanna select all the data in these two columns. We're gonna go to the insert tab here and we're going to choose under XY or under scatter charts here, we're just gonna choose this XY scatter chart just with the dots there. And we'll move this up here in the top corner and just kind of uh, resize it into this gutter over here. And essentially what we have here is the kind of the bones here of the calendar chart. We have six rows essentially of dots as you can see here, and seven columns. And the columns, the seven columns are of course the days of the week, the seven days of the week. And that's what this XY data is over here. As you can see, it's just the X data, which is the horizontal axis going uh, left to right. That's one through seven for seven days in the week. And then it repeats here. And then for the Y data, which is the vertical axis, we start with six, which is the sixth row and kind of work our way backwards here. And that's just for the labels because essentially the sixth row would be the row at the top here. So as you can see, we have the date labels over here for the dates in the month, and those are gonna go from top down. So this should go six, five, four, three, two, one, all the way down. So now that we have the chart created, we need to do a little bit of formatting here. The first thing we're gonna do is select the chart. Then I'm gonna go up to the chart design tab here and click select data. That's going to open this window. And the series that we just created was named Y when we selected that data, but we wanna change that. So I'm gonna hit edit right here. And for the series name, I'm just gonna click this box and go up here and I'm gonna choose current month. And then we'll hit this and hit okay, and now it's named current month. And this is gonna be important because we're gonna add additional series to this for the days completed and other things in the future as well. So we wanna make sure it's nice and organized. So that's all, the only change we need to make there to just name the series and we'll go ahead and hit okay. And next we're going to format the dots. So with the chart selected here, we're going to go up to the format tab and I'm gonna click this drop down here and choose series current month. Now, of course you could just click the dots here to select the series, but we're going to add additional series here and this drop down makes it much easier to select those series as we add more of them. So kind of get used to selecting your series from here. And then we're gonna uh, click format selection. And that's going to open up the uh, format selection pane over here. And we're going to choose uh, this format option for fill and line. For line, we're just gonna leave it as no line. We'll click marker here. And then under marker options, instead of the automatic, we're gonna choose built-in. We'll leave it as the circle. And then for the size, we're just gonna bump it up. So I'm gonna choose 19 here and hit enter. And as you can see, our dots or our circles are now much larger. And these again, and just represent each day of the month. For fill, we can choose a solid fill here 
And then for color, we can just choose this light gray color because this is for all of the dots or all of the days in the month. And then we're gonna add an additional series for the days where we've completed uh, the more colorful dots there. For border, we'll just choose no line and then that's good for the dots. So now we have the dots or the circles here again for each day. Next, we need to add data labels. So we'll go right here and click the plus for chart elements and we're going to choose data labels. So we'll just click that checkbox here. As you can see, it's added data labels, but they're not correct. This is not what we want. So really what we can do here is click the arrow and then go to more options. And over here in the task pane, we're gonna go over to this option right here for label options. And we're going to choose value from cell. So just click that checkbox. That'll prompt us to select a range. And that's the range right here. So we can just select this range. You can select one, hit control shift down arrow or uh, select with the mouse all the way down to the bottom, K4 to K45, and we'll hit okay. And so now you can see we're getting closer here, but we still have the Y value. So we're gonna uncheck that over here. We'll also uncheck show leader lines. And then the label position, we want to center that right on the circle. So we'll say center. And now we have more what's looking like a calendar. Now these date labels are fully dynamic. And what I mean by that is if we go over here to the start date for the chart and we change this. I'm gonna change it to 7-1-23 for July and hit enter. That's going to change the date labels. And that's because this uses a formula that determines the current start date of the month. Now, if you're interested in this formula, let me know in the comments below and I'll create a separate video that explains it in more detail. But essentially this formula returns a date. And we can see that if we just go up here to the format dropdown, we can see that it's returning a date here. And then all I've done is just format it for the day only. So right click format sales or control one on the keyboard and that'll open up format sales. And I just went to custom and type a D in here. And that's just gonna return the day only for the date. And that's exactly what's displayed on the chart. All right, so now let's add the colorful dots for the days we've completed the task or goal. And that's in columns M and N over here. And it's just X, Y data, similar to the current month data. In this column here, we have a formula. And this is using essentially a count ifs formula to do a lookup. And what it's doing is it's looking up this value here. Again, this is a date. It's looking it up in this data over here. And if it finds it, that date is a yes in the complete column, then it's going to return a number, either one or a number greater than one if there's multiple occurrences of that. And then we're then using this if statement here, this if function, so if it's greater than one, then it's going to return this number here, the X value, which in this case is just pulled from the current month, all of these values here. If not, it's going to return an NA error. And for charts, when you have an NA error returned, it's not going to plot that dot in this case. It's not going to plot the circle, it's just going to leave it blank because there's an NA error there. So that's how we essentially skip days that we didn't complete. So we just have this X, Y data. So we just need to add this to our chart. So we're first gonna select the chart. We're going to go to the chart design tab here and choose select data. And then we're going to click the add button. And for the series name, we'll first select that. We're gonna just use uh, select this cell here to put the word complete in there, complete color. For uh, X values, again, select this first one, control shift down arrow to select that entire column. And then for the Y value, same thing, control shift down arrow there. And then we'll hit okay. And we'll hit okay again. And now you can see on our chart here that we have the dots. We now just need to format them. And the formatting is really the same as we did before. So I'll go ahead and quickly do that. With the chart selected, we'll go to the format tab. On the drop down here, we're now gonna choose series complete color. And that will select all of those dots. We'll hit format selection. Over here on the right, we're going to uh, click this button then go into the marker. Marker options, again, will be built in circle. I uh, will do the same size as before, which was 19, hit enter there. For the fill color, again, solid fill. This is where you can choose any color you'd like. I originally did this blue color, so I'll just select that. For border, we'll say no line. And then that's really it. Now you can see that we have all of the uh, days where we've completed the task or goal are marked blue and the others are gray. And I almost forgot that I did have the font as white. So again, here we can choose the data labels and then select all of those. And right over here, we can go to text fill and choose white and that'll change them all to white. Again, this is totally personal preference to match whatever color theme you are using. And now we just need to add the day labels across the top. This is this part's a little bit trickier, uh, but stick with me here and I'll walk you through it. So again, with the chart selected here, we're gonna go to the chart design tab and hit select data, and we're going to add a series. And for the series name, I'm just gonna choose day labels here. For the X values for right now, I'm just gonna choose these values. Again, this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. And then for the Y values, I'm gonna choose these zeros here. Now this doesn't really make sense, but again, we'll go ahead and hit okay here and we'll hit 
okay here. And again, this doesn't really add anything here except these dots at the bottom. But now what we're going to do, again with the chart selected, chart design tab, change chart type, and we're going to choose a combo chart. And when it first starts out, it's gonna look ugly and not right, but for current month, we're gonna change this, scroll down a bit to the, oops, to the XY scatter, choose that. And then for complete, we're also going to scroll down to the scatter. And for day labels, you can leave those as line or you can choose a column chart. So I'm gonna choose a column chart. And then one other thing is we don't want the secondary axis. So we'll go ahead and uncheck that. As you can see in the preview here, this is starting to look better and we'll go ahead and hit okay. And so now we have everything here with our data labels down at the bottom. Now we might wanna move these to the top. I like it at the top, I think it looks a lot better. So we'll select the uh, labels here, the axis labels here. We'll go over to this side. Again, we'll select this button right here, axis options, and we're going to go down to labels and choose label position and we're going to choose high. And that's going to put the labels up here at the top. And then next we can also slightly modify the Y axis here. So we can select uh, these labels. We'll go over here and for the minimum, we can leave that at zero. But if we change this maximum, essentially what we're going to do is lessen this gap right here because really we have a gap between the top row here and our actual labels because this maximum is seven. So we're gonna put that, let's try 6.25 and hit enter. And now what this does is change the minimum to an auto number. So we'll just put zero there as well and hit enter. And so that's just going to move our top row up closer to the labels. And I think that's looking better. Now, finally, what we're gonna do here is we'll just hit the elements tab. On our axis, we'll go over here. We can turn the vertical axis off because we don't need to see that. And we can also turn the grid lines off. We don't need to see those either. And that's really kind of cleaned up our chart here to make it look good. And then one other thing, I noticed we have this line down at the bottom still for the horizontal axis. If we just select any of these values right here, we'll go over to the formatting options here on the right side side. And then for line, we're going to choose no line and that will get rid of that line at the bottom. And finally, we'll add a title here. So again, on the elements tab, we're going to choose chart title. That'll bring our chart title back. With the chart title selected, we're going to go into the formula bar here and I'm going to type equals. And then I'm going to select the cell that contains the chart title here in T4. So select T4, hit enter, and that's going to display the chart title there and link it back to that cell. So as the date changes, and in the next video, we'll make this interactive with the spin button. But even if I was to just type in a date, right here for August, you can see our chart title, that's a formula that's dependent on this cell here that returns the month and year. And then the chart title will also be updated since it's linked back to that cell. All right, so that's the basic build out of the calendar chart. Now, one important thing to note here is I've designed this workbook in a way so that you can take any of these sheets and copy them into your own projects. And you would do that by just selecting one of the sheets, whichever one you like, right click it, move or copy, and then create a copy and then choose the workbook open your own workbook and choose that one and move it into your workbook. All of the chart data and the chart is on the same sheet. So when you move it over, it will copy into a new workbook just fine. There won't be any formula links or anything like that. Now, when you do move it into your own workbooks, of course, you're gonna to wanna to apply this to your own data. So in order to do that, you can either just uh, change the data here and you can put any date range in these columns over here with yes, no values, or you could modify that to your own liking. So if you already have data and you only have dates where you've completed things and other dates you don't have, things complete or, or those dates are blank or just not in the data set, you can totally work with that too. You'll just want to change this formula here in this column to point to your own data. If it's on a different sheet, that's totally fine. Or if you want to change this formula, you can absolutely do that to accommodate. But essentially you want numbers here or NA errors where you have for the dates that you haven't completed something. And I've also used functions and features that'll work on any version of Excel. So in the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to make the chart interactive. We're gonna look at adding these spin buttons here to change the month, along with some different styles that I've come up with here that you might like, including this more uh, minimalist style and a goals feature where you can have uh, weekly goals displayed on the chart as well. So again, I'm curious to know what you'll be using this chart for. So leave a comment below and let us know how you're going to use this chart. And of course, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.